Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, welcome. My name is Stella and I make videos talking about current technologies and tutorials on how we can use them. Today I'll be talking about what JavaScript is, why we use it, and the basics of running a JavaScript program. So let's get started! So what is JavaScript? JavaScript is one of the most commonly used programming languages right now to build real-time web or mobile applications and games. That is because not only can you run it on the front side, client side, you can also run it on the back end or server side as well. If you're wondering how that works, for the front end, the browser will have a JavaScript engine that differs depending on what web browser you're using. For example, if you're using Google Chrome, we will be using V8. For the back end, the JavaScript engine is embedded in a C++ program called Node that includes Google's V8 engine in order to run JavaScript server side. Now that we have a better understanding of what JavaScript is and how it works, let's go over some basic JavaScript commands. You will need an IDE in order to do this. I'll be using Visual Studio Code because it already comes with built-in JavaScript IntelliSense, which gives you intelligent code completion and debugging features. The first thing we're going to do is install a live server extension to serve the web application. To do that, we'll go to extensions and search up live server. Once you have installed this live server, restart your Visual Studio code. After your live server is installed, go into a folder of where you want to store your JavaScript file. Now that I'm in my folder, let's make an HTML file to make sure that our live server is working. So we will create a new file, hello world.html, and then we'll create a small HTML file. We'll add a header with a body and a heading of hello world. After we have saved our HTML file, we can go down to the Go Live button and click on it, and we can see that our web application is being served on port 5500. Now that we know our live server is working, we are ready to start implementing JavaScript. We can essentially put our JavaScript anywhere, in the header section or the body section. However, the best practice is to put it in the body section after all the HTML code. The only exception would be JavaScripts used for styling, then they would be put in the header section. To start your JavaScript, we'll create a script tag underneath our HTML code, and we'll do a simple print statement in the console by going console.log and then hello world. We're going to end the console log with a semicolon similar to Java. Then when we save this file and go to our live server, we will left click and click on inspect. Then when we click on console, we can see that it has printed out hello world as well. To add comments in your JavaScript, we'll do two double slashes and then we can write any comment we want. Print out hello world. So when we save this file, we can see that our console only prints out the console log hello world and does not print out prints out hello world. When you're building your application, there will be many different scripts doing different things, and it can make your code very messy. That is where the separation of concerns come into play. Instead of having one large HTML file, we can group the script tags into different JavaScript files and then call upon them. To do that, we will create a JavaScript file in the same folder as our HTML file, and we'll name it output.js. In here, I'll do a simple console log of I am being called upon. And then we'll end the console log with a semicolon and save this JavaScript file. Next, we'll go back to our HTML file and delete what we have in here because we don't need it anymore. And then our script, we'll have a source where we will call upon the actual JavaScript file. Source equals output.js. And then when we save this file, we can see that our console has changed and it is now I am being called upon. Another great thing about having a separate JavaScript file is that we don't need to go on our actual web application in order to see what our output for output.js is. For example, instead of outputting I'm being called upon, I want to just say, hey, how's it going? Then I'll save this file, and when I go into the terminal, I'll type in node, which is our backend JavaScript engine, and the name of our file, which is output.js. When I press enter, we can see that it outputs our console log, hey, how's it going? Now let's move on to JavaScript variables. We can use var or let to declare variables. However, the best practice as of now is to use let, as var will have issues later on. The let variable is versatile, and unlike other programming languages like Java or Python, you don't actually need to specify the data type, as JavaScript does this automatically. For example, I'll declare a string variable called output and set it to my name, Stella, and then close it off with semicolon. I can also use the same let statement to declare an integer variable. So let num equal to five. To print variables, I'll first delete my first console log. And to print the variables, all we have to do is console.log, and we'll do output, and then we'll do another console.log, 
and we'll do a num. Now when we save this file and run it again, we can see that in our terminal, our variables have been outputted. To concatenate variables and strings, all I need to do is add a plus sign. I'll add a space just for formatting purposes, and then num. So then when I save this and then run it again, we can see that my string has been concatenated with another string, which is a blank space, and as well as the number itself, style of five. And then we have our second console log, five. If we want to reassign our variables value, all we need to do is type in the variable's name and then set it to something different, for example, two. So when we save this and run this one more time, we can see that our number value has changed from five to two. The opposite to a variable is a constant. For instance, let's clear all of this and then let's set a constant, const num equals to five. Let's try changing the value of the constant. So num equals two. When I save this file and then I run it again, we can see that we have a type error or assignment to constant variable. That is because constants are not supposed to be reassigned. This is great for declaring things that don't have changing values. And that wraps up my video on talking about the basics of JavaScript and how to run it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you are able to follow along and learn something new. If you like this video, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up. I make videos like this every single week, so if you like what you see, please subscribe to my channel. Also, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for future tutorial videos, please make sure to leave them down in the comment box below. Other than that, thank you again for watching my video, and I'll see you next week.